In this video, I will be demonstrating the Shot Mask script. The script itself and additional documentation is available for download from my website at zerbrig.com. The Shot Mask script allows users to dynamically generate a camera mask that contains a frame counter and any relevant shot information. The mask itself is bounded by the camera's resolution gate. Common uses include play blasting, embedding the details in the images, and providing a frame counter for reviewing animation. The shot mask can be configured and created through a graphical user interface or through script for automation, shelf buttons, and more. So let's get started by taking a look at the user interface. To do this, I've just created a shelf button that will bring up the GUI. With the GUI on screen, you can see all of the options that are available to you when creating a shot mask. The camera field allows you to specify a specific camera to display the shot mask on. Otherwise, it will use the active viewport camera. The labels section contains six different label fields, allowing you to create a number of different labels, scale them as you see fit, and offset them anywhere on the shot mask. Additionally, you can change the font that's being used, the color, as well as the transparency. The shot mask counter, which I've covered up with the GUI here, is currently displayed in the bottom right-hand corner. Although I do have the option of positioning it in each of the corners of the shot mask. I can also control the padding on the shot mask as well as its scale and its location. So I can offset it left and right and up and down. The same as with the labels. Finally, there's the borders section. This is where I can control the visibility of the top and bottom border as well as the border scale and the border color. So for example, I can just control drag to change the thickness of my border. Or if I want, I can change the color by clicking on the color swatch and selecting a new color. In this case, I'm just going to go back to black. Also, I can change the transparency if I find that it's interfering with my shot. When I'm happy with the settings of my shot mask, I just need to click the build button. So I'm just going to get rid of the one that I already have and click build you'll see that the shot mask is generated very quickly. And if I take a look at my outliner, everything is contained in one single node. I can also create the shot mask through script. And if you see my shelf, I've got four different masks that I've created just for this video. The first is a default shot mask. So this just gives you the default settings. At any time, you can get back to your default settings from the edit menu in the GUI by clicking on reset settings. And this will just clear out any fields and put in the default values. In script, this can be accomplished by running the restore defaults command. Here you can see this in the tooltip for my shelf button on the second line. So shot restore defaults. The other shelf buttons I've created are just to demonstrate the flexibility of the shot mask script. So if I take a look at shot mask 2, here I've created a shot mask that only uses the bottom border. I've increased the size of the counter and I've also moved the top left label down to the bottom so that I have two label fields on the bottom. If I just look at my GUI quickly, you'll see that I am using the top left field as well as the bottom left field, but I'm providing an offset so that I can move that top left field down to the bottom border. The third shot mask is just a frame counter. If I don't want anything interfering with my shot, but I want to be able to see which frame I am when I'm reviewing things such as play blasts, this is a great option. And the last shot mask I've created is just to show the positions of the labels 
So you're going to see position 0 at top left, position 1, position 2, and then position 3 moves down to the bottom left and across the bottom of the mask itself. I also have a button to delete the shot mask. And finally, I've created a simple play blast script just to demonstrate how this can be of use when you're actually play blasting your shots. Most times you're not going to want the shot mask to be displayed in your scene. It's just going to get in the way when you're trying to animate. With the play blast script I've created, the shot mask is created before running the play blast command and then deleted immediately after. It also removes the resolution gate and any overscan so that the shot mask completely fills up the play blast window. So here I just click play blast. And you'll see my play blast is generated. Now you can see that the shot mask is on the very edge of my play blast. So it's not going to interfere with any of the animation I'm trying to review. For those of you curious about the play blast script, I will be including it on my website along with the shot mask script.